Hello, everybody. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to kind of summarize up your learning over the last bit of this chapter, and then you'll get to practice all of this in the next lesson where we put it all together. So basically, the last couple lessons that I have worked with you guys on is about how to go from a rule to anything without having to do something in between. So it used to be that if you want to go from a pattern to a rule, you'd have to do rule, table, pattern. All right, so you'd have to do pattern, table, rule, right? But now you can pretty easily go from pattern to rule. That's pretty easy. And then based on the last problem you did before getting here, you should have been able to go uh, pattern to rule. Find a rule to pattern. And in the past, if I wanted to go rule to graph, I had to go rule table graph. But now I can just go rule graph and graph rule and vice versa. So we're going to start with a rule, and we're just going to find everything based off that rule, just to show you how everything kind of ties together. Ties together. OK. Sorry, my camera is having trouble today, as you probably noticed on the last three videos. <laughs> so my rule here is, oh, what's a good color? Let's go with Christmas theme colors. Because it's Christmas. Okay. My rule, my growth here, is two. Okay. And then we'll go with red. My beginning, I'm just going to abbreviate that to B, is negative one. I'm going to use these two pieces to build the rest of this. So first, let's go to a table. We'll just work our way around. So when we're working in a table, I filled in the values negative 2 through 2. This is a pretty good spread. It'll get you a nice uh, graph, especially if we're working with parabolas. Remember, those are the u's. This is a good one because it'll show you that u. I know my growth is 2. I also know my b is negative 1. My b is talking about 0. So I can just fill that in. Right? That's how I would find it if I was on using a table. And then I know my growth is 2. So if you want a nice little shortcut and you haven't figured it out yet, once you fill in 0, then you just take the growth and fill out the rest of the table. So negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. Ta-da! And then just to show you how to use a rule again, let's do negative 1. So I knew I have 2. I need to multiply by negative 1 minus 1. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, minus 1 is a negative 3. So this is a negative 3. And then this one, since we have to move by 2s, is a negative 5. So as you can see, we are adding 2 both times. Do, 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 do. So I start with negative 1, that's my b. And then I add two repeatedly, and that is my growth. So, woo, we did a table. So now let's look at a pattern. Uh, you should have worked through this one with Ms. Schmidt. Sorry, <laughs> I have scooted far over than my paper is. But basically, I know that my pattern has to start with negative one tiles and then grow by two. So here's the problem. Can I have negative tiles? No, I can't. And you should think about this when we do the project because there's a couple patterns that start with negative one tiles or negative tiles and it's really easy because all you have to write is can't do it, it's negative tiles boom so we can't start with figure zero because figure zero is no <laughs> you can just write no figure one though should be one tile right because we're adding two so i'm going to be super uncreative and figure one is going to be a box i mean figure one couldn't be anything other than a box Okay, so figure two needs to add two more tiles. So let's do, boom, two more tiles. Figure three is gonna add two more tiles. There we go. Pretend those are not connected. Wait, did I add too many? No, I didn't, I added two. We're good, we're good, we're good. That's my pattern. I am adding, I start with one, then three, then five. 
so I'm adding plus two, plus two, plus two, and we can show that in our pattern by coloring in what is added. So add, added, added, added. Boom, so we've just gone from a rule straight to a pattern. Now let's go rule straight to graph. I graphed in green, so let's do it in red. B, remember, is my y-intercept. It's where it crosses my y-axis. So I get to just put a dot at negative 1. Dot. And then my growth is 2. So my growth, if we take that over here, is m equals 2, which means that my rise over my run is 2 over 1. Okay, remember, whole number, you just put it over none. 1 over one. So I'm going to go run one, rise two. Run one, rise two. Run one, rise two. Run one, rise two. Now a fun little vocab word for you guys. Let's see if I can get the camera closer. Do you see how these dots are right in the middle? Right? They're right in the middle of four boxes. Boom, boom, boom. Right, if I continued this down, there would be even more that are right in the middle of four boxes. That's because this is one, one, right? Two, three, it's even. These are what we call lattice points. Oh, sorry. Because they hit right in the middle. And then in chapter five, we'll look at lattice points and we'll use them to try to figure out uh, what rules are based on graphs that don't actually provide us any points. So I want to show you a natural lattice point. I've just connected all my dots. So if we follow my line all the way down, I stop having dots right here. But do you see how my line crosses right through the four boxes again? That's a lattice point. There will literally be a test on this. It's the easiest test you'll take all year. You just identify every time the line crosses through four boxes, evenly, evenly. Anyway, thought that was fun. Let's bring it back up so we can look at it. Okay, so I have my rule, which has gone straight to a table. Fill that out. My rule, which has gone straight to a pattern. I didn't need a table for this. I just took the pattern. And then my rule has gone straight to a graph. I didn't use the table for this. I used the graph. And remember, if you're trying to find a rule based off a graph, then you create a growth triangle with a run of 1 and a rise of 2. Boom. And then my y-intercept is at negative 1. And that's it. This is a combination of all of your learning. You should feel super smart. Look at you go. This is what your projects is going to be looking like. Uh, so finish the next lesson and then come talk to me or Ms. Schmidt and we'll get you started. The project is going to start with a pattern. I'm going to hand you a pattern and then from there you are going to make the rest of the stuff up. And that's your project. And it's kind of fun. Okay. Have a great day everybody. And I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Actually I won't. Ms. Schmidt will see you in the next lesson. But I will see you in class. Say hi.